Hello, how's it going? Welcome to Combat Ready HQ. Today we're looking at a video from Task and Purpose. Check out the original video in the description. But we are looking at America's new Abrams X tank needs to chill out. So it's roughly around a year old and it's a new tank that they're modifying there. It is a very, very good tank and it's definitely up there with the Challenger and the Leopard 2. So interesting to see what they say about this the modifications it's having by the sounds of the title it's going to be pretty beasty but we will see remember to like subscribe please guys it really helps push the channel we're doing really well the community is building go and follow us on instagram check us out on our website join the free discord become a channel member if you want to i really appreciate it you can join uh, members such as Kathy, Rhonda and Rocky. So please check that all out in the description. We're going to get into the video right now and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Hey Spare Parts Army, I'm your average infantryman Chris Caffey. Earlier this month, for the first time, General Dynamics released brand new footage of their next generation Abrams X that aims to replace the four decade old M1 Abrams tank. But I think a lot of people don't know that many of the Abrams X weapons and concepts originated in seemingly failed weapons programs from the 1980s and 90s. Let's analyze what we know about the new tank's cannon, hybrid electric tree hugger engine, and its electrical systems that sound like Jarvis from Iron Man. Man. Have you ever felt certain you were meant to be fancy royalty? Established Titles offers title packs that give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official lady. certificate with a crest making you a certified lord or lady. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. This is a perfect gift for your friend, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, mm. or family. Established Titles is a fun new way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. They're a project based on historic Scottish customs where landowners are referred to as lads or lords and ladies in English. So you can officially change your name to lord or lady, you can put lord on your credit card or dating profile, or there are a couple packs that come with adjoining plots of land. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will be within walking distance next to my plot. Established Titles is running an early Black Friday sale, plus if you use code Task and Purpose, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Task and Purpose to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Head over, With everything we've recently off. learned about modern tanks' vulnerabilities on the battlefield, is this new one really all that different? Much of the Abrams X technology is based on an infamous U.S. Army acquisition program that has its roots in 1999 called the Future Combat Systems. FCS was the Army's most technologically complicated and expensive modernization effort since World War II, with a projected life cycle cost of $200 billion. It promised to field new, lightweight, low-recoil tank cannons and 20-ton unmanned robotic vehicles that were all linked together on the same wireless network. Okay. Or as the Department of Defense would say, The system of systems will link the power of sensors, command and control, and even unmanned systems to the soldiers and leaders we are growing today. It's the system of systems. It's the alpha and omega. It's the be all end all of defense programs. In 2009, after blowing through $18 billion, Oof. the future combat systems program was finally canceled. No new vehicles, no new systems were successfully acquired. However, and sometimes they wonder where the budget goes. Spend 18 billion and get nothing for it. However, we're now seeing many of the seemingly failed ideas from the scrapped Future Combat Systems program are actually getting resurrected. For instance, the General Dynamics Abrams X prototype footage reveals that it's using the XM360 lightweight 120mm nice. cannon with a ported muzzle brake that was originally designed for the FCS program in 2005. It only weighs 4,100 pounds, nearly half the weight of the old 6,800 pound M256 cannon. Bennett Labs developed the cannon at their location in Waterlevitt Arsenal in upstate New York. See, I don't just Arsenal. mispronounce foreign towns. Arsenal. Bennett Labs is the US Army's primary design, development, engineering, and production facility for large caliber armament systems since 1887, when the arsenal was founded. Nice. The National Defense Industrial Association published a document detailing the unique aspects of the XM360 cannon. The XM360's muzzle brake reduces recoil by relieving some of the built up pressures and has a blast deflector to minimize overpressure felt near the cannon. The weapon sensor electronically integrates with the tank's diagnostic system, giving crew a live readout of its health. Glad I got out of the army before they started trying to put electronic microchips inside me to monitor mm. my health. The 
That's just another thing that could break buy you out though. Another thing you got to try and fix. From Zax uses an unmanned turret that automatically really? loads the ammunition itself with a carousel system. The advantage here is that it lowers the system's weight by a lot because the turret can be smaller and requires less heavy armor protection since there are no crew located inside of it. So you might be wondering right now, if the Abrams X has an autoloader, does that mean that these tanks will detonate their ammo like the Soviet era T-72? And the answer appears to be no. The Abrams X looks like it might have some blowout panels on the back of the turret that send any ammo detonation up and away from the crew. According to General Dynamics, there's a massive difference here. The rounds still always stay behind a blast door on the Abrams X. Wait a second, before we continue, is it just me or is that new paint job look exactly like the color from ED-209 from it Robocop? So it says, obviously, yeah, you're gonna build most of the armor around where the crew is. Um, but to obviously to save them and protect them. But would it would it not sort of make sense? You know, you want it all heavily armoured because all it's going to do now me, if I was the enemy and I would know that the turret is not as armoured as the rest of the vehicle, you're just going to aim for the turret, destroy their gun. Um, you're still more than likely possibly going to injure them inside as well and you're going to take out a tank. So you just, you know, that's just my thinking behind that. It's obviously a weak point, isn't it? Sandbox.com got some great interviews with Tim Reese, the business manager at General Dynamics, and he said, quote, by comparison, the Abrams X weighs in at just 60 tons. So the next gen tank weighs 10 tons less it's than massive. the current 70 ton Abrams. Massive. Many people have pointed out how similar the new Abrams X design is to General Dynamics old M1 tank test bed concept from the mid 1980s which also had an autoloader and an unmanned turret with the crew sitting up front. However, the TTB was canceled because the Soviet Union fell apart and there appeared to be no threat from Russia anymore. At least they were correct for 30 years, right? You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. Having an autoloader turret makes it easy to add a remote control capability, potentially allowing troops to operate the Abrams X from miles away, which raises okay. the obvious question, how many times can you get your remote controlled robotic tank blown up before we stop issuing you a new multi-million dollar remote tank? Yeah. The Abrams X new turret decreases the crew from four down to three soldiers, which has its own pros and cons. Maintaining a tank with one less hand could increase stress and workload on the reduced tank team. Yeah, so think about that. A uh, great point is workload maintenance off that vehicle. Driving along with tanks pretty much nowadays can go across all ground, very good, very fast, over most ditches. But what if you throw a track? That's now only three of you to fix that track. One of you's got to be in the driver's seat um, at times when you're getting track on and off. Um, you know, when you're going around doing your first parades, doing your maintenance checks, checking wheel nuts, checking oil levels, you're one less bod. Bearing in mind, you know, you could be out all day and night, lack of sleep, sleep deprivation, foods, so you're already tired and now you've got to take up the, you know, more maintenance work. So it's all good cutting one less crew to save you money on crew, but you're just giving them more work. But warehouse, have we seen this everywhere? UK military cut loads but kept the same amount of jobs if not gave more jobs so everyone had to pick up the slack but didn't get any pay for it. However, the new vehicle would require less maintenance, so the crew doesn't okay, feel the impact of having less hands to help out on the vehicle upkeep, and you don't have to worry about having one less private on your team who's complaining about missing their girlfriend mm, back home. That. This autoloader system would be a major departure from Western tank design, and looks more similar to how Russia and China's armored forces operate with smaller crews. General Dynamics released mock-ups showing just how different the crew positions are gonna be now. Now all three soldiers are sitting together surrounded by giant LCD screens. All of the sensor data and information from nearby friendly drones Crazy. can be piped straight to you. There have even been mock-ups of a possible two crew design for the tank that shows what it might look like to have the driver and the gunner's seat up front. I've noticed the new trend for interiors on these next-gen tanks and helicopters is have a large high-resolution flat-screen LCD display. Normally you see yeah, it's exactly how the Ajax is. The Ajax now is done by, like, the driver's got, like, three screens and it's all done by cameras. Everything is done turret down and you've got, obviously, multiple cameras and screens. You can still have full situational awareness, um, which is pretty decent. You do need it nowadays, you know. The more situational awareness, the better you are going to be. 
see a 50 caliber machine gun on most tanks, but the Abrams X chose no surrender mode with its beefed up 30 millimeter Kongsberg protector <laughs> RS6 chain gun fitted on top. Manufactured in Norway, this thing is close to overkill. Ooh. It's like having the firepower of a Russian BMP and a T-72 combined into one platform. Yeah. I've spoken directly with the Autocannon design teams at Northrop Grumman, and from what I could gather, the main reason for upgrading from the legacy 50 caliber machine gun is because these new munitions are smarter. Or you can set the round to explode at a very precise point, and that's all done within the gun. And so when the round travels downrange and gets to a predetermined point, it will burst at that point. And it can be okay, anything yes. from troops in the open, troops in defilade, can also be lightly protected uh, vehicles. So the Abrams X cannon can fire next generation nice. tank ammo that was initially designed for the canceled future combat systems program. The mid-range tank ammunition hits targets beyond the line of sight past five miles. This means it can guide itself over hills. It's laser guidance system with a series of embedded thrusters that ignite and maneuver the tank munition in midair at high speeds while a sensor on the nose of the round tracks the target. Mid-range tank ammo is yet to be fully adopted into units, but having this ability on the cannon future-proofs the Abrams X and allows it to be upgraded well into the future. The online like sight was one of the cornerstones of the future combat system program. But the tank's main highlighted new ability is its silent operation. According to the Russian Way of War publication, you can normally hear a tank traveling on a country dirt road about 1,200 meters away, and you can hear one traveling over hard paved roads about 4,000 meters away. This is a major disadvantage for armored vehicle crews. It's actually the slogan for the Abrams X teaser trailer that says they'll never hear us coming. The Abrams uses a hybrid powertrain that results in 50% fuel savings. This sounds like it's placating to the green, eco-friendly lobby, but in reality, hybrid electric engines have increased torque and performance. To make it sound less tree-huggy, the Army overcompensated by naming it the Advanced Combat Engine. <laughs> Gentlemen, how do we make this tank engine sound cool? I know, let's randomly throw the word combat into its name. Anywhere will do. Johnson, have I ever told you you're a genius and I love you. The original Abrams with its turbine engine was notorious for high fuel consumption. Yeah. So it can switch to the electric engine for more silent idling and low power modes. This hybrid power system will increase the Abrams X maximum power output, which was a huge limiting factor for the legacy Abrams. The old one was reaching its limit on power consumption. When you start to throw on active protection systems that shoot down missiles in midair, or new anti-drone energy weapon technology that can scan for and fire high energy beams, these things eat up tons of power and require these new engines. If the engine is completely turned off, then the vehicle is still in accessory mode. Having that large electric battery means that you could potentially have several hours of time where you can use the electronic systems like the 30 millimeter remote controlled weapon station or the gunner's advanced next gen thermal targeting system without having to turn on the loud, power-hungry diesel engines. So all this is very, very good. So we'll just quickly go over some of that. Very similar to the new Ajax vehicle in the UK military. Um, they've got smart ammunition. They've got big LED sort of screens now when it comes to drivers and commanders. They've got full situational awareness with like HD cameras. Um, they've also reduced the noise on the Ajax. So it doesn't sound like your standard typical armored vehicle coming down the road, which is what it looks like this. Obviously, like he said, big negative, big weakness of armored units. It's just the noise um, and the Ajax is meant to be quieter and it looks like the Abram X is quieter. So that's absolutely brilliant. It you know increases your ability to hopefully get closer to targets without being heard before you are seen, which is massive. Um, smart ammunition is great. Like I said, the airburst is brilliant. So if you've got troops in open, you know, and they're engaging you, you've got an armored target of troops in open, you can fire obviously the main arm armament into the armored, and then you can fire the 30 mil at troops in open or soft skin vehicles. Uh, Engine and fuel is just obviously a massive one. So like they said, if you've got the electric side, so when you're sitting there, we used to do it when we was in OPs. So when we was in our scimitar and you're sat in an OP in a woodblock, you're using obviously all your computer systems, um, your night sights constantly. Uh, you've got to constantly every now and then start the engine up to keep the battery going so the battery doesn't die. With this, you're going to be able to do that for longer without having to start up, without giving off once, the, once again, the noise. Now I wonder, where did hybrid engine research originally begin? You guessed it, future combat systems.
The Abrams X third generation FLIR device can see two and a half times further than the legacy systems. It's like making a leap from a standard tube television to a high definition 8K TV, is how Raytheon describes it. I spoke with the experts at General Dynamics LAN Systems about the Catalyst Electronic Architecture software system to get an idea of how this is exactly going to change the Abrams X and how it will change fighting doctrine. Architecture, that's really what's new this year, is the vehicle electronic architecture and the hardware that make it it run from yeah. the inside. It's the electronic boxes, the power control, the, the sensors, and all the data sharing implements, and the software code to make that all work. And then on top of that, we can put apps for the lethal fire control system, or for a UAV, or for manned unmanned teaming with another vehicle, and it runs on that base architecture. It gives crew members the ability to see through armor where they look, thanks to cameras mounted on the exterior giving tank crews the same ability that F-35 helmets have for their pilots. It then populates a GPS map with all of the information automatically. This is the dream of the failed and laughed at future combat system coming close to reality here. It's just that the technology is only now coming into maturity. It's apparently taking about 10 years longer than the Army originally planned for. What do you think of the General Dynamics Abrams X prototype? Do you like the direction it's heading in? Is there anything you change about it? Do you agree with my assessment that the future combat systems program might not have been wasted of an investment after all. Thank you for watching Spare Parts Army. And if you like this episode, I think you'll really dig this one. Yeah, I think it's literally where everything is going now. They are trying to bring in new bits of kit and equipment, but the majority of it is now is just modifying the software, uh, bringing in new technology, new systems to keep it updated. And it's really exciting to time. Like I said, I've done a few negative videos recently on the army, but it's an exciting time to be in the military with sort of software issues, GPSs, um, sort of little small tablets, the way the mapping's going to work, communications, where it's all going to be connected through Wi-Fi, I think it's going to be sent quicker, you know, the computers and the screens attached to these sort of armoured vehicles and the way weapons will be able to lock onto targets within seconds um, and counter fire and counteract is absolutely brilliant. And it, I think this is, hopefully they can get all of that work and this is going to be an absolute brilliant take and, and as long as it's used correctly, it'd be amazing and it'd be one of the best tanks out there for sure. Let us know what your thoughts are as well and I'll see you soon.